Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about buying and selling magic cards on eBay. And this is my personal opinion on that. I, if you have a different opinion, I would love to hear in the comments. Maybe we can have a good discussion. I'll try to make sure that I keep an eye on this particular video. Uh, just because it is, you know, I do have some expertise in eBaying. So the problem with eBay, uh, so I'll start with buying. The problem when I buy stuff in eBay, so I buy a lot more anime figures, or I used to buy a lot of anime figures. I used to buy a lot of used video games. The best prices, if you are only concerned about prices, you are going to get ripped off, mainly because there's a lot of fake. In anime merchandise, pretty much I would say 75% yeah, of the merchandise or um, yeah, anime figures are probably fake and it's not like noticeably fake they're all from fakes from china and stuff like that so transformer toys i used to buy a lot of those they're pretty much fake on ebay and yeah anything that i have expertise in it's not a big problem because i can be like hey this is fake this is a reason but if i'm buying something that i don't know that well so if you're a new magic player and you just want to get cheap cards uh, tcg player is in my opinion a lot safer because at least it's someone vetted, right? And buy from a buy buy from a seller with a lot of ratings because typically what happens is a seller with who's going to do this fake stuff, he'll try to get away with it and then close the account and then open a new account so then they won't be a feedback, like negative feedback. But that's what I have to say. Magic, I don't really buy cards from Magic um, on eBay, um, mainly because the prices I have are so good but compared to and again you can leave a comment and tell me hey this is different but if you buy video games on there's a lot of there's something called reproduction cards and they can come they can get pretty realistic to you know the actual thing and there's not I mean there's a lot of proxies on eBay as well but there's also cards that are proxies but they don't mention they are and it gets bidded up and all of that type of stuff so buying on eBay in my opinion, I don't do it. Um, I don't have to do it. My friend owns a video game store. He owns an anime, anime merchandise store. He owns a Magic the Gathering store. Like, why would I buy from anywhere else? Uh, not, not only to support him, but because the prices are... If I can give him a listing for a real toy that like we know is real and that's not scamming... Because the scamming toys are like so much below the, what you would regularly pay. So I know people can say, oh, I get a great deal on eBay. Just like Craigslist, there was a time where that was true, that you could go on Craigslist and you can find the best magic collection ever for like 25 bucks, and there could be moxes and all that type of stuff. At least that's what they say, right? Same with eBay. There was a time where uh, you could buy stuff on eBay and that would be fantastic. But I think that time has passed. And the time has passed on Craigslist. Craigslist is a bunch of scammers and stuff like that. And, but the time is also passed, I feel like, for eBay, for Magic the Gathering cards. And that's because every time, oh, I guess the hobby I can most relate to this is I collect a lot of uh, football autographs, patches. And you know what I'm talking, so I'll give you an example. A football card, it has a patch of like a jersey, a game-worn jersey, and then the better the patch, right, the more valuable a card. So what people would do is they would cut like, you know, patches from, so these patches can go for a thousand dollars. If it's like an NBA logo man, that patch can go for depending on if it's a Michael Jordan patch, woo, probably five figures easy, at least high four figures if not five figures. Then like you're like okay, well let me take out this one card, one little patch. It's not this easy. I'm using a very simple example. And let me cut my Michael Jordan jersey and pass it in. Well then that jersey isn't game used. The whole point of it. Is defeated and that's bad and it happens a lot in the football eBay community and that's why I do not football I normally do basketball actually I collect a lot of basketball cards and it happens a lot I don't buy from eBay I join box breaks where people open the box and I like get a like a team and that's fun because like it's just fun like I'm paying for entertainment at that point even if I don't get anything but besides my, my point being in other trading card games where there's higher price cards and you know Lotus is 10k at least you have this problem on eBay where people are you know 
making counterfeit cards or signing counterfeit autographs. That problem exists for Magic the Gathering. Now, it's not patches and autographs, it's the actual card itself, right? There's no need to like write, you know, Michael Jordan's like the name on, you know, like yeah, Chrome or Angel of Vengeance, because you don't even need to do that step, right? So that's my problem with buying from eBay. My problem with selling from eBay is the fees are too high. And the fees keep ticking up and up and up and as you know, as time goes on, they've never gone down before. So I imagine that they will just keep going up before as a seller. No. Absolutely not. Once you get your eBay fees and your PayPal fees and all of that stuff, you could take it to Strike Zone online in person and they would give you just about the same in my opinion. Oh, they've always given they've always treated me extremely fairly, so I don't feel like they would not like I've tested it out on popular cards that you want to get rid of that you have many copies of. Spending the time to list each of these pop let's say if I have a hundred abrupt decays, they hit twenty-five dollars, and I'm like, okay, I gotta get rid of them. It's going to A, take me a ton of time, I'm going to get killed in fees and all, you know, PayPal fees, eBay fees, shipping fees. If I mailed out, I'd say 200 of them, I would probably get about two people who were not satisfied, who would say the package was lost, blank, 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 and then we are tracking and you spend more time. It's just a numbers game. Or do I just take them all to strike zone and say, hey, I want to sell it to you for this much. Will you take it? And they say yes. And then you're done. So yeah, it, it really is, you're fighting for a few nickels and dimes on eBay, and those nickels and dimes aren't even like, you would have to be moving in such a quantity that those nickels and dimes wouldn't, you can do stuff in bulk, you can buy packages in bulk, bubbler in bulk, you can ship in bulk, you can print out your shipping, you can have them pick up so you don't have to go to post office. Etc. You have to, you would have to be pretty much a store to um, have the pricing that you need to have. So if I open like a fat pack and I mail it out, that's like five bucks with tracking. Uh, most places in the U.S. Uh, I think in Texas it was like four twenty-five, but Seattle I know is like five or six dollars. Uh, Philippines I know it's about eight bucks, eight to nine dollars without tracking because a lot of those places don't have the tracking option. Um, yeah, some places don't have tracking option even if you want to get it or sometimes the tracking option is just so... I remember I was trying to get tracking in Russia because I was trying to get like... Uh, I was trying to sell dual lands to Russia and I couldn't find a cheap enough tracking option for one dual land. Now if you're shipping 10 of them, yeah, you track it for 10 bucks but you're shipping just one $50 scrubland in Unlimited, and at the time, you're not going to be like, okay, well, cool, because it's like, they expect you to cover, as a buyer, as a seller, a lot of buyers who, they expect you to cover shipping. I, I don't know why that is, even unless you have like really bold no, shipping not included, or you're doing it on eBay or something. When you do it online, they expect your price to include shipping. I think that's a primarily function of I sell like $35, $50, at least $100 worth of cards in a TCG play that's always shipped for free. Uh, or many times it's you don't pay for shipping if you buy you know $35 of cards. But if they're buying $100 of cards from me, um, the price is I have to kind of consider that I have to give free shipping on that. So the price is, is a little higher. Anyway, eBay is not my favorite place to buy or sell cards, and those are my reasons I don't use eBay. What do I use? I use uh, Facebook groups. I use actual people, so local card games uh, stores. There's a few. Again, my friend owns a store, so it's very like I, I get I get the fact that people don't have that kind of best friend who owns a store, right? But a lot of that's not true. That's one of my friends owns a store, but the other stores I can, I get really good deals at, discounts and stuff. If you buy directly from the owner and you email and you text message the owner and say, hey, I'm coming in, I want to buy $800 of stuff, and you even do that one time, you're going to get a discount for life. I, that has never changed. It happened at Groovy Geckos, Phoenix Games. Uh, the other place in New York City I used to play at a lot. I hope it's still open. It was like in Midtown, New York. Uh, fantastic place. 
we're sitting in the middle of nowhere. I kind of want to look at my DCI number to like see if these stores are still around. But anyway, bye guys.